I've been asked to make a video about my game collection and miniatures collection. I don't think my miniatures collection will impress you very much, but let's crack on. I'm going to start with the small games. First of all, a couple of uh, print and play games. Dungeon in a Tin. It's a little tiny dungeon crawl. And it's okay, it's quite fun. You go in and you fight goblins and you rescue the princess and you try and escape. It's a properly decent little game. Obviously these won't be huge reviews. This is just a, a brief skirt through my uh, collection here. And the, also, the other print and play game I really quite like is Z-Deck. It's a game about zombies. You are fighting through... Basically, there is a period in the month where you the, the zombies are more dormant, so that is the time to try and collect your supplies. And then during the full moon, the zombies go absolutely crazy. And uh, that's the time when you have to make sure you've built up enough supplies and uh, you've not died trying to collect them. So this this is quite a fun little game. It's very random and a nice bit of a laugh there. Okay, Pocket Mars. Um, a decent little solo game. Not amazing. I don't love it, but um, there are so few components. It doesn't take very long. So if you, if you want a tiny little game about trying to colonise Mars, then this is the one for you. Basically, uh, the AI uh, it has is is quite good. Um, I've only drawn once. I've never won. I've lost lots of times, but um, I wouldn't recommend it. It's it's okay. I quite I find it quite diverting for, for a few minutes. It's all right, but it's it's such a tiny little box. It's not um, a burden on anyone, and it's very cheap. So. Uh, if you want a tiny game about Mars, which is quite good, then uh, this might be the one for you. I really like Harbour. Um, you are trying to make money and buy buildings in a harbour. Gull's Bottom, it's called. Stringing with the lights tonight. Um, nice little meeples and uh, different characters you can play. Just my little homemade summary of the AI rules. All these crazy uh, buildings you can try and buy and use as you fight against the AI. The um, the rather silly problem with this here are all, here are all your characters. The AI rules are on the back. Of the AI, which makes it very difficult when you're playing the game to look things up. So that's a, a bit of a design fault, but um, all different characters to choose from if you want, or you can have a fairly generic character to play. But uh, plenty in here, great fun. Um, I really like this game, it's a really good laugh. It doesn't take long, um, yeah, it's good fun. Now, Card Ventures Jump Ship, in this case, is a very silly game. It's um, a simple choose your own adventure game. Um, not very con complicated or demanding. Um, you have a few different decks, the Deep End, the... Um, what's the ship called? Well, you, you have a few different ships you can explore. Your own ship is... Uh, this one, this one sh shuffled randomly, that's where you start. And it'll give you a start card. You love being a pirate, Captain. Except when other pirates try to raid your ship, two scallywags have just climbed aboard the Black Bounty to steal your hard earned treasure. Go defend your booty. And it'll give you choices where to go to. You can move to the other ships, you can end up in the deep end. And your task is to raise as much gold as you can to end up on Mermaid Beach and count up your treasure and see how, how well you've done. Very silly, 
Um, it takes five minutes to play, not very demanding. A simple choose your own adventure game in card form with a pirate theme. I'm not recommending it. I just I just like it because I like pirate games. <laughs> I love tiny, tiny epic galaxies. It's great dice rolling, custom little bits and bobs, um, different AI that you can choose from easy to very very difficult indeed. This is the activation bay where you can affect the dice, you can man manipulate the dice. Um, here's one of the AI cards which has different effects. Choose all your different colours. Um, one, th one thing that's just a really neat little gimmick is the uh, the top of the box, which you can't see, is the dice tray. So, you know, it's just a neat little thing. Um, nice little wooden uh, characters. I won't get the thing out. This is just a quick run through. But um, Tiny Epic Galaxies, great game. Love it. So I said to the uh, online game shop, I said, is that the actual uh, first edition you have in your, uh, your shop that you're selling, just like the photo? And they said, uh, yes, it's probably the one in the photo. It's not, it's the second edition. So um, I cannot deny that the artwork is fantastic in uh, Tiny Epic Defenders. Um, it's a perfectly good game. I'm not wild about the gimmicky meeples with the stick on weapons and stuff but um yeah the artwork's great it's a sort of fighting fires kind of game You're trying to bring down the threat level in different areas and the artwork is great i've only played it once um it was it was fine but you know it's it's one for the long haul there's nothing wrong with it uh nice artwork yeah there it was uh not not one of my favourites, but um, it's fine. It sits there and it doesn't take up much room. Multi-universum. You are working in the CERN laboratory. Some gateways to other dimensions have opened up and it's the job of your scientist to close them before any badness gets out. And your scientists are one of the, these uh, little meeples. And you're working against another scientist who's trying to do the same thing. You're trying to beat them. And there is a Cthulhu variant of this, apparently. But I like this one. I like the uh, original version. It's a great little game. I haven't played it a lot, but I do like it. Multi-universum. Super the Car Game is one I got on a whim. Uh, a micro deck builder. I won't get too much of it out, but um, you have this little uh, play area here to sort of organise your game. You don't need it, but um, it's just a little bit helpful. I'm really sorry the camera's wobbling. And I'm sorry for the glare from the spotlight. I struggle for light, particularly at this time of year. So. It's difficult to explain, but basically the action takes place along this track. Here your obstacles come along and you try to take them on. or uh, And the amount of cards you use to defeat certain obstacles adds up along here. And you take that many cards into your deck and um, the obstacles you don't take go into here. It's all, it's got quite a nice flow to it. I'm not... I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail, but um, it's an enjoyable little game and I haven't got really many deck builders, so to have this tiny deck builder is quite fun. It's sort of a, um, it's based on a computer game and uh, you're fighting your way through an action scene basically as some kind of secret agent or something like that. So uh, super hot, the car game. I, I've played it a few times. I do like it. But it's not one, not one of my regulars, but I do like the game. Initially, I liked Hostage Negotiator. It's a dice rolling game. You're using cards to try to um, influence your 
dice in a way and influence your look. Some uh, have more powerful effects than others. Here's your little meeples, they're great. You're trying to save them. Um, use conversation cards and stuff. It's it's okay, I don't like... The theme has worn off. Uh, it's not a very nice theme, is it? But um, it's an okay little dice game. I've not played it in a while, to be honest. I'm not getting the uh, expansions, because that would spoil the effect of it being a nice little game. But... Um, We'll see how I go with that. I may get rid of it, I may not. Space Hawk Death Angel. I have the first edition of Warhammer 40,000. It's been part of my life, <laughs> that game. Uh, Space Hawk Death Angel is fantastic. It is a brutal, wonderful game. The cards are just... the artwork's great. Even though they're upside down. Um, lovely 40,000 artwork. A warty thou, as they called it at one point. You have your squads of marines, several of them, and you're trying to get through locations, defeat enemies, complete objectives. Great game. You have this um, tokens and this terribly cursed die, so much so that somebody has created a, an a, an app version of the dice, of the die, because they thought it was was cursed. But um, Space Hook Death Angel, love it. One of my favourite little games. Friday, the classic deck builder, sort of, or deck something. Something to do with decks, anyway. Um, a great little game about building up your the resources in your hand and eventually fighting against the pirates in order to escape the island and uh, using as many clever combos as possible to uh, defeat the pirates. I sort of won once, I think, in case I got some of the rules wrong. Just once, mind. I've played it a lot. And uh, I, I like it. Some people really don't like it. But... Um, I enjoy it. I don't play it a lot, but um, when I do, I usually enjoy it. But I need to be, I need to be in the mood. It, but it's a, a great little solo game. Samurai Spirit is a great village defense game. Where you're fighting against these interlopers who are trying to invade the village, like the uh, Seven Samurai or the the uh, Seven Cowboy guys. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, it's been a long day. You have all these uh, guys to choose from on the back. If you get injured to a certain extent, you turn into your animal character. So you can uh, cause some more aggro with that. Nice little meeples for your samurai to mark the uh, uh, how many enemies are you are defending against here. Very clever rules. Uh, lovely components, they look great. Uh, all these enemies coming at you with their various different abilities which affect the game. Um, great game. I, I really. Uh, it's not one I play often, but when I do, I just think, yes, that really is a fantastic game. <laughs> so, uh, Antoine Bowser, classic. This is a game you'll see in your local bookshop, maybe. It might begin with the W, Waterstones, in the UK. I really like Forbidden Island. Um, the components are nice. The game, I think, is really clever. I love the artwork because it, the island theme reminds me of the Mist computer game. And uh, it's just a lovely little game. I, I really enjoy playing that. Whenever I play it, I always think, why don't I play this more often? I don't know. The uh, look at these treasure components here, so shiny, really nice, really lovely game. Uh, I really enjoy that, and it's in a nice, nice, lovely tin here. Love for Bidden Island. Shadowscape is part of the Mistfall universe. It is a sort of dungeon crawl. But it's more of a puzzle game. I've talked about it on one of my uh, other videos. It's it's a good game. It's a 
well, it's a clever game. Um, here is the uh, expansion. You can use the Mistful miniatures with it. Lots of tokens here, lots of cards. Um, these aren't full reviews, obviously, but it's it's an okay game. Um, it's not going to take the place of, uh, well, Castle Ravenloft or something, but it's an interesting little game. If you can find it cheap and you like strange card games like Mistfall, then you might enjoy it. It's a lot simpler than Mistfall. And, you know, it's okay. It, it's in a nice small box. It might not knock your socks off, but it's all right. Yeah, neat little game. And also in the Mistful universe is Chronicles of Frost. I wasn't sure whether to get this or not, but it, it is a good game. Uh, even the strange-sounding Brash Hero AI actually works quite well because you are conscious of what the Brash Hero is doing and you're trying to keep up your points as well as they are earning theirs. It is... Um, it is a good game. It's a neat little puzzle game and like a tiny version of Runebound. It's um, or Mage Knight or something. Uh, it's a neat little um, quest game where you're travelling across the land trying to complete objectives um, and earn more points than your rival does. I have the All That Burns expansion for Chronicles of Frost, but I've I've not tried it yet. Um, this adds a more cooperative uh, element rather than the competitive game, which um, Chronicles of Frost is. But I've not tried it, so uh, we'll leave that there. <laughs> Infection is a puzzle game, and it's quite a challenging one. And it's one of those games which will take me a long time to master. I find it a very, very uh, challenging puzzle where you are trying to put antibodies together to create a vaccine against this plague which is mutating all the time. Um, I like the event cards um, but I find it very challenging and I'm not sure what you're supposed to do to win <laughs> but um, uh, unfortunately I got this from the States and it really hit me hard when it came to customs and I got charged an extra £15 or something insane to uh, get this into the country. So I'm not going to give up on it, no matter what. Um, it's a good solid game, it's an interesting game, but it's a challenging game and it's going to take me a long while to master. So if I'm playing it till I'm 80, trying to uh, get to grips with it, then that's what I'll do. But it's only small, it's not taking up space, it's, it's in one of these cute piece of boxes. So, um, yeah, Infection, Humanity's Last Gasp. A very, very challenging puzzle game. And I hope I get to grips with it one day. This is another game I really love, which I've not played a great deal. Uh, I played it a good few times, though. And um, you are travelling to find a lost city. And um, there is a... Judge Dread version out now, but I, I like this one, it's fine. And I've also got the uh, expansion for it. It's a really challenging resource management game. You can choose different characters and that to try and uh, make your way across the rainforest to get to the lost city. And uh, this adds extra bits and bobs which make it uh, more challenging and more intriguing. Um, I really enjoy this every time I play it. A really great game. The um, I've mentioned before, I think, the, the cards in here, they don't look, they don't tend to look very good on videos, but when you see them in real life, they're so nice and big. And the artwork is nice and big. That... Uh, Let me find some more, some of the more challenging cards. There we go. They're just really nice. 
And you've got these nice little uh, got the meeples here, all these resource tokens. A really, really enjoyable game. Every time I play it, I enjoy it. The Lost Expedition. If you're really into Judge Dread, I like Judge Dread, but um, I don't want to buy that other game for the sake of it. So if you haven't got this and you really like Judge Dread, then maybe you might like to try the Judge Dread game because that's pretty cheap. Um, but I, I got Lost Expedition and I really like it. I really like the theme. So um, another one of my favourite games, which unfortunately I don't play very often, but when I do, I love it. Zombies. I like zombies. Um, not known for being a solo game, but it depends what you want from it, really. Um, I am happy with the, you know, you, I use a revive token. When my character gets killed, I switch this over and it says you get three health back and you get three bullets back. So my character is back on his feet and uh, trying to make it through the rest of the adventure. You're trying to um, save, was it 25 survivors or? No, you're trying to um, collect, collect, kill 25 zombies or so, uh, or uh, find the helipad and escape. So whichever objective you want to go for, you can use these survivor cards to make life more interesting. There are a good few variants in here about what you might want to do. But um, I, I use it as a solo game. I roll uh, my movement and I do my movement and I roll 1d6 for the zombies. Then that many zombies moves one square towards me, starting with the nearest, ending up with the furthest away. And uh, hopefully with my revive token, I can make it to the hel helicopter. But um, it's just a box full of zombies, basically. All these crazy little miniatures and all of the uh, excellent street tiles to build your city. And somewhere in here is the uh, helipad, which you're trying to find. I like it. It's it's silly. It's simple, just like me. So uh, I bought it when I was on holiday. I, I bought it on the same holiday where I bought Space Hulk Death Angel. So I have a lot of fondness for both of these games. Um, this is perhaps more solo friendly than this one, but I don't care. I, I love zombies. It's great fun. The last game I'm going to cover in this uh, video is an almost small game, box size wise. Ravage Dungeons of Plunder. I've covered it in a, another video, but this was the first game I backed on Kickstarter. The first of two. I've, I've backed two games on Kickstarter. Loads of tokens, wonderfully colourful artwork, really colourful dice. Um, it's very much like one of the D&D adventure games or a bit like Hero Quest. A lovely brightly coloured cards, except that you are playing orcs. You have four orcs to choose from and a an expansion, a standalone expansion is in the works. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that. But um, yeah, a fun light dungeon crawl. Excuse me, my camera's gone crazy where you are making way th your way through a completely random dungeon every time it's different. There are quests that the updated rulebook tells you how to play solo. So not only do you have your normal solo mode, but you can also use the quests in a solo mode by using two characters. So there is plenty of value for money. I've knocked the camera again in here. Um, loads of cards, loads of item cards, loads of monster cards. All the monsters are standees, great artwork throughout. You have your little uh, standee stands here. Loads of tokens, funky custom dice. I've made a video about this. 
So this will be the last of my small box games. So that's just a little toe dip into the not very deep ocean of my game collection. <laughs> so these are the small box games. Thank you very much for watching.